because I want you to listen because the more you see the less goes in your ear did you realize that? Oh, the more you see the, the yes oh yes yes mm -hmm. this is why it's hard to convey a message around a TV set <laughs> All right, well, before we start, let's have a word of prayer, shall we? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for a beautiful day you've given us. Thank you for the simple things of nature that you said, when used intelligently, uh, can produce supernatural results. And Father, we just thank you that uh, you've given us these things. that are a little taste of what heaven has in store with the tree of life. But we're not there yet, Father. We want to be there. We want as many people as possible to be there. And we pray that you will help us to use this extension of your, your health message to bring others to know you as their personal Savior. And we thank you for answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. By the way, I just want to mention an aspect of herbs that is often overlooked. Um, <coughs> Herbs are a great way to witness the people. Yes. Great way to witness the people. In fact, 80%, what did I say? 80%, 80 of the world's population use herbal remedies. Okay, so it's not going away. In fact, um, even the World Health Organization is advocating education on herbal remedies and using herbal remedies especially when there's no doctor around okay so um, it's a great window of ministry because listen unfortunately many of our, our great health educators have missed this component and it's, uh, it's not that this component is more important than any other component. They're all important. But when you don't focus on a component like this, then when people get some disease, where are they going to turn to? If they can't find a natural remedy, in, uh, and, and as good as hydro is, it doesn't cover everything, right? As good as charcoal is, it doesn't cover everything. Good as garlic is, it doesn't cover everything. And also herbs don't cover everything. But it will cover some areas that are very important. And so people are going to go to the medical side of things that don't have any idea about these things. And so uh, not to say uh, we toss the baby out of the bathwater, but we need the balance of both sides. We need to know when this is appropriate, natural remedy, and when it's not, this, this, uh, this may be the modern way to go, may be the best way to go in some cases. So, but if you don't have knowledge, how can you make a decision? How do you know what the other options are? And so, um, when I got into herbal remedies, I only knew two doctors that were promoting herbal remedies. One was from Uchi Pines. <laughs> Agatha Thrash and uh, we had the blessing of having her in our home um, for a training seminar at North Carolina um, about a year before she uh, fell asleep and um, she said I, I wish we knew more about herbs she said, she said we need to know more about herbs and essential oil she told me <laughs> yeah and then when I was at Wildwood, we had a physician over there called Dr. Grievous, a great man, a very humble doctor, and he um, was very big into herbs. He used herbs uh, quite a bit. And so um, when I ventured out, I didn't really have many uh, people to turn to, you know. And so uh, uh, sometimes you uh, read things and you don't know, uh, is this really scientifically based? or should I throw it out, you know? And so I had to use uh, inspiration as my primary filter, okay? Common sense is my next primary filter. <laughs> and then science, where it harmonized with the first two, all right? Because 
let me tell you this, there's a lot of misinformation in science about herbal remedies. In fact, I would say that most, most of the double blind studies done on herbs in America, which is 78% is the pharmaceutical companies, has been skewed. They put a spin on the research. So the, the people are, who are reading it uh, don't, you know, the, the general public, they don't, uh, they really don't know the, the truth of the matter. Um, so do your homework, okay? And we don't want to go into the ditch of New Age uh, mindset. I don't believe that there's some mystical powers tied up in here, okay? That Yellow Dock is not a god, okay? God is not in Yellow Dock. Okay, <laughs> but God uses yellow <laughs> talk. There's uh, not invisible frequencies that are going around changing your aura and body chemistry into a uh, spiritual entity. Okay, uh, but they do have scientific rationale. Now, sometimes, oftentimes, we don't have the research to understand how it works. We just know it works, right? So I could tell you that uh, Vitex helps uh, the hypothalamus pituitary access that governs all the ladies' hormones to help regulate progesterone and luteinized hormone and whatever. But how that specifically works, I can't tell you, we don't know. We just see the effect, you see? So, um, I believe the common sense approach has more validity than even scientific uh, double blind studies many times. So you know, it's like when you hear these sermons on knowing God's will, right? What do they say usually? Three ways, right? The Word of God, <laughs> Providence, and the Holy Spirit, right? And they say if you, these three line up, then it's uh, looking good, yeah. right? This must be the way, <laughs> okay? So I, uh, I try to see if they line up. Research, common sense, inspiration spirit. Because uh, the Bible tells me that not all herbs are safe, okay? A enemy sowed in the good, uh, in the good soil, right? He, he threw some tears and he messed it up and had some poisonous weeds coming up. And so Satan has done that. He's put some of his poisonous agents out there. All right. So not everything is safe. I don't want anyone to think that uh, I'm advocating all herbs. No. Uh, and as I said before, some of the most advocated herbs are some of the most dangerous. Marijuana is not something you want to put in a cookie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They put marijuana in cookies now. Did you know that? In brownies. In brownies, yes. There was a man who committed suicide just from eating a cookie from marijuana. He jumped off the building, a four floor uh, sets of floors, four stories high, and uh, they found uh, high amounts of, uh, of marijuana, uh, T THC, in his bloodstream. All right? So, um, we know uh, it just like the Bible, you know when it says uh, you'll know a prophet is among you when if a prophet says something and uh, it comes to pass then you can know but then he says also if it comes to pass but he's turning you away from the Lord your God so it's like okay even if it comes to pass there's still another criteria he can't turn you away from from the true God right so it has to line up so um, you can understand how herbs work also by the effects. Are they good effects or are they bad effects? Because when the Bible says that when God adds a blessing, He adds no sorrow to it, that means that He doesn't spike it with some poison. Yeah. That's how error works, right? You get the truth and you, you mix it. You know, just like a glass of water, you put a drop of arsenic in there and do you want that water anymore? <laughs> okay. So, uh, so I would say when you study herbs, and because it's hard for me, I've had just someone a few minutes ago say, what, what book would you recommend for herbs? 
And so I'm thinking, okay, what is the safest book I can recommend? <laughs> okay. Um, and there are some, but they're few. Uh, most authors of her books are not Christian. Uh, we have a set of, uh, I didn't see them back there, but I did see the Food Encyclopedias by George Pampelona. There's a two-set volume also with herbs. It's, it's called the Encyclo uh, Encyclopedia of Medicinal Plants. Okay, and uh, I know Dr. Pampelona, he's a friend of mine, and he's done a lot of research. These are the food books, but you've seen the other two? They're the plant books, so they cover herbs, or herbs as Americans say. Yes, it's the only word that you use a silent H. Uh, we don't say Elf, do we? Yeah. Is your name Henry? <laughs> uh, Encyclopedia of Medicinal Plants. Okay, so that gives you uh, a good introduction into herbal remedies. Um, and uh, uh, he's done a lot of good research on, is on these things. Uh, is that a website? Um, you know Cole Porter's? Uh, if you can find a Cole Porter that sells these, chances are he'll be able to sell you the medicinal plants. There's also a thin paperback, a paperback edition. You know the that is uh, about, the author is Dr. George Pampelona. You, you know, <laughs> you know him, right? I used to sell those. You used to sell those. <laughs> <laughs> and you're asking me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> you said they used to sell them, not read them. I uh, know they read them. Okay, yeah, it's a good idea to read them if you sell them. <laughs> but, yes, um, they are good books. How about Back uh, to Eden? Back to Eden. I have mixed feelings about Back to Eden because. What are the feelings? No, well, there's some good things. Uh, some people use it as like a herbal Bible. Okay, it was written a long time ago over a hundred years ago and um, it is it needs to be updated okay I'm not saying the I'm, I, I'm not saying it's all bad I, 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 it, it can be helpful but it's not uh, it's like some people use that natural remedies encyclopedia as like a Bible you know and it it is useful and I'm not saying don't get it and don't read it it's helpful but it's not, uh, it's, you know, it needs some, it could use some um, uh, changes as well. But um, the, uh, the Back to Eden book uh, definitely needs to be updated. You see, back in those times when herbalists would put recipes together, okay, let's say you have a liver problem. They would get, uh, say, milk thistle, burdock root, um, yellow dock, um, uh, maybe, uh, what's another bad tasting one? <laughs> the the line. Anyway, they put them all together and have you drink them and hold your nose and down the hatch. Okay, so if you're going to, if you want repeat um, success. success, you need to have something that is adapted to the person so it's at least it's not revolting to them that, the, you know, because sometimes the treatment may be worse than the, the problem, right? Okay, so um, it's just like cooking. It's like cooking, so it, you've got to make it palatable if you want the people to enjoy it. So that's where you, you use aromatic herbs. You may use some uh, peppermint to, to flavor honey, licorice, uh, you know, something like lemongrass, or uh, you may spike it with some stevia, red clover, you know, some things that have a nice aroma taste to them. All right, so just, uh, but that book isn't really um, going to do that. All right, so we need to write a herb book. That's what we need, don't we? Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we need a herb book. We need a lot of, a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay, I just want to test you from yesterday. Okay, we, you were all here yesterday. I think everyone was here yesterday. Okay, okay. What, what herb comes to mind when you think of helping the skin? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, calendula. <laughs> okay. All right. Calendula. Yes. I say calendula, you say calendula, I say potatoes, potatoes, whatever, we agree it's the same thing. Um, okay, now, 
What's it good for? What what would you recommend it for? Psoriasis, eczema, rosacea. Okay, we good. Yeah. For the skin, yes, yes, it's for the skin. <laughs> All right, um, what about uh, digestive system? Let's say you want to settle the stomach. Ginger. Ginger, okay. If you got nausea. Okay. What's that? Chamomile. Chamomile, that's right. We had that as number one, didn't we? Yeah. Chamomile. Yeah. What can you give to babies? What could you give to a baby? Chamomile. Chamomile, that's right. Uh, how's it going to help a baby? What conditions could they have? Colic. Colic, that's right. Colic. G cramps. It cramps, gas buildup, right? Yeah. Those types of things. It really helps with that. Okay, um, let's see. What else we have? The immune system. What herbs would you recommend for the immune system? Turmeric. Turmeric, yes. Now, turmeric, is it, is it, um, a herb that that is um, well researched, or is it just very well more, more than any other? Yeah. Okay, what what specific things could you recommend turmeric for? What specific inflammation? Okay, pain. Yes. Okay. Do you know uh, turmeric has many? It's different. A it's a what? It's a blood thinner? Blood okay, so if I've got rat poison, well let's be more euphemistic. Um, <laughs> warfarin, um, then uh, could I use turmeric? Could I use turmeric? No. Couldn't use, I couldn't use uh, turmeric. No. What, what would be the best option? Use turmeric or warfarin? Warfarin. Okay. Um, it depends. It depends on the situation. You okay. give the warfarin in the hospital for a patient who had a heart surgery. Uh huh. And also. Yes, uh, they do. As AF, uh huh. Do you to repeat that lifetime? Yeah. So I don't know okay. if you can replace it with turmeric because, like, the mitral valve replacement, there's uh -huh. a mechanical uh -huh. uh, valve that they put in the heart, artificial. Yeah. And they're using warfarin to thin the blood. Yes. So I don't know if you can use turmeric or clover leaf or whatever for that. <laughs> okay, um, what did we say a good blood thinners? Water. 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 Okay, think about it. I just, want, I just want you to think through the process, so it's not just me telling you what I think. But would you think that God wants us to avoid water to take a medication? So we're just dependent on the medication. Now we we got to get off the water. We got to get off, you know, turmeric. We got to we got to get off having fruit. Does that does that sort of make sense to you? No. Mm. But people do this. People do this. Some people don't drink water anymore. I know. They just drink. Soda. I know. I've had some nurses. Mm -hmm that uh, they cannot drink water while they're, they're looking at a monitor. And they can't, they, yeah, they can't drink, they can't, they're not allowed water at their station. And they're not, some of them are not even allowed to go to the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, they've got to watch this, this uh, <laughs> QRS wave <laughs> on the screen. Um, yes, listen, this is where common sense often gets overridden yeah. by medical nonsense, okay? So, um, we have to weigh it up. You have to weigh it up, right? And you, you make your decision based on the weight of evidence, all right? Now, everyone has to make up their own mind. But if it were me, I know what I would do. I would rather have the natural blood thinner yeah. than I would artificial. 
Now, I'm not saying there's never a place, but I'm just saying um, you've got to weigh it up. You've got to consider all the options. And you see, now we've got some medical intervention that can prolong life. Sometimes there is a danger involved where we prolong life at any cost. Mm -hmm. At any cost. We've got to keep that heart beating one more beat. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't extend life. Uh, I'm all for extending life. But, um, in a way, some of these things have taken the place of, of what would have happened anyway had these things been here, and it diminishes the quality of life. And then it becomes an issue over ethics. Is it, is it okay to pull the plug? Or should we just keep it going and hope that this person will come out of a coma or hope that this drug will kick their heart in or, you know, all these types of things. Now, um, what other herbs did we look at yesterday? Is anyone, can Echinacea. anyone tell me? Echinacea? Okay. Echinacea and golden seal. Okay. What kind of echinacea would you recommend for the immune system? Purpurea? Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Or oh, gustifolia. Yeah. Okay, or gustifolia. Okay. Now, um, can you tell me what the difference is? The is one from the root and one from the leaf? No, no, they're both, they're both, they're the just same. The yeah, they're just a different variety. Now, there's a um, Echinacea pallida, and that is, um, or you may say pallida that is not uh, medicinal. So those are your three main echinacea. Yes? Yeah. No, um, if I just bought some just now, I'm trying to figure out, so how do you, you just said echinacea and golden seal, it's a... It's oh, okay. A, the, the uh, it was the liquid the extract? extract? Yeah. Okay. So... Yep. How would so you know? The same one that you're, you're talking about getting for mm -hmm. the infection drug. No, so then the that, immune system. Yes, yes. Um, Echinacea and golden seal, both of them you don't want to take too long, like for over several weeks. You just take them when you need them. Okay, and echinacea in particular, it increases the white T cell count and it increases uh, the ability of phagocytosis. Um, so it's really helpful. For that. Phagocytosis, or phagocytosis. Yeah, you know what that means? Okay, for those who don't, what it means is, okay, you've got a white blood cell. Okay, here's a white blood cell. And here is a little, a little virus. A little virus here. So what it does, it, it comes up and it, it envelopes this into itself. And phagocytosis, uh, phago means eating, and cytosis, a cell, it's a condition whereby the cell eats. Did you, did you know that cells eat? <laughs> uh, well, this particular cell does, okay? Um, so you're looking at macrophages, things like that, you know, uh, monocytes. They have the ability to envelope something and they take it in and they destroy it. So let's just say that's a bacteria. This is this is amazing. Okay. Or let's say it's cancer. Let's say it's cancer. Often it, it can take something in to destroy it that in the process it, it gets destroyed. Now usually a cancer cell is a big cell. It's bigger than the white blood cell. And so if it's, if it's in a very primordial state, very early stage, uh, T cells can take care of them. But when they get big, you need many of them to, to destroy the, the, T, the uh, killer cell, the, the um, cancer cell, I'm sorry. You know, you know what a cancer cell is? Okay, remember in Daniel it says, He shall think to change times and laws. That's what a cancer cell is. It's changed the time in which it divides. 
It believes in immortality of the soul. <laughs> yeah, it does. Because a cancer cell does not want to die. It doesn't want to die. So that there's other cells around it, and they send little messages. Growth signals. It's time to die. But the cell says, no. I'm not ready to die. I don't want to die. So, you know what it does? It ignores them. It switches off its cell phone. I'm not talking to you. It, it changes the polarity of the cell membrane. It, it, the whole cell is changed from inside to out. It goes through about 10,000 changes before it becomes a full-blown cancer cell. You know that? And the most important change is in the middle. The, the, the law is in the middle of the cell. We call it the DNA. Mm. The DNA. Remember Jesus said, don't change one jot or one tittle of the law. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Okay, well, the DNA is, you know, that ladder, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got little nucleotides. Could be a G here, connected to what? You can tell me. What's the nice let C. And let's do, and A goes to what? T at GC. We're at the GC. Okay. So, if you change a letter, you have changed the law. Okay. So, there are little enzymes called editase. They zip up and down the DNA very fast. And they're like an a, a editor looking through a book, looking for spelling mistakes. So they come across one, ah, we got a problem. So scissor enzymes get notified, no, no, notified. They come along, splice out that problem, cut out that section. The DNA gets put back together, and you know nothing about it. It goes on all the time. But if you, if you let these changes take place, you don't correct them, you can end up with cancer, you see. So, cancer cell, it's changed the time, doesn't want to divide anymore, it's changed that, the time of, of death. Uh, we have programmed cell death called apoptosis. Well, it doesn't pay any attention to dying. Self is on the throne. And the first law of a cancer cell, do you know what it is? It's called, there's a medical term for it. Anyone know what it is? It's called self-sufficiency. You heard about that? Self-sufficiency. So the, the first law of the cancer cell is I got to take care of myself. Yeah. So it becomes self-governed. So the whole DNA is focused on that. So the time which it divides is changed, the DNA is changed, the law of God. So it becomes a papal cell. Yes. <laughs> and it becomes puffed up. And it sits on the throne. Everything has to follow its law. Uh, 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 and, and guess what else? It evangelizes. It sets up its own school and it makes disciples throughout the whole body. If you leave this long enough, it will make disciples. Well, the white blood cell, they say it's better, it's better for us to die than this guy to keep going. So, we're going to destroy it. See? By destroying it, they can get destroyed. You see? But it doesn't matter because they are servants. They rather lay down their life for the body. You see? That's their attitude. We, we're, we're happy for the body to keep going. If we can die for it, we're, we're, we're so happy we fulfilled our mission. You see? <laughs> you see, this is, this is like Jesus, isn't it? 
He took sin and it became, he became sin, it says. Right? He became sin for us who knew no sin. So he took it in himself. He took it who knew no sin. He's without sin himself, but he took us, takes it upon himself. It kills him, but by killing him, he kills it. That's what happens on the cellular level, on the immune cell. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and we get free. We, we don't have to face. You see, we have, we have free radical attacks every day. Do you know how many we have every day? 10,000 attacks every day on every cell of the body, on average. That means that's a lot of attacks. There's 100 trillion cells in the body, 10,000, that's 1 million trillion free radical attacks every day on the body. These attacks need to be fixed up. So, let's say, uh, let's say I'm, I'm, uh, I've got a sledgehammer and I destroy, I'm destroying this building. I want to smash it down and I'm putting holes in the wall here. Okay, and there's another guy coming up behind me and he's patching up the holes. But if I can, if I can uh, get busier than him, and I can keep smashing faster, and I can do more damage than he can fix, then I can destroy this building. Ultimately, I can destroy this building. So, that's what happens in the body. When your body can't keep up with the damage, when there's too much going on, you may be lacking sleep, you're lacking exercise, you not drink enough water, you're super stressed out, there's more holes, more damage, more DNA getting messed up, things need correcting, and it can't keep up. So the damage exceeds the repair mechanism, and then it's easier to fall prey to cancer, to diabetes, to heart disease, right? So, but if you give the body what it needs, you assist it, you help reduce the free radical damage. You take high amounts of antioxidants. You know what antioxidants are, right? Do you know where you can get the highest source of antioxidants? Herbs. No, no, <coughs> herbs. Oh. You didn't know that. You thought it was blueberries. It, yes. No. <laughs> blueberries don't come close to antioxidants you find in common herbs like uh, oregano, uh, basil, Thyme, uh, parsley, uh, you know, uh, uh, what does it say? Rosemary, things like that. They, they have high amounts. Now, you're, you're not going to eat a bowl of rosemary. We didn't eat a bowl of rosemary today. But you don't need a bowl. You just need uh, just a teaspoon, maybe a tablespoon of nice culinary herbs on your vegetables, and you can get tons. Rosemary, thyme, and what else? Basil, basil, oregano. These are extremely high in phytochemistry and antioxidants. So, um, anyway, aren't we fearfully and wonderfully made? God is uh, in the business of making us, I mean, oh, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to go back to my physiology days and get my skeletons out of my closet and teach you about all that stuff. <laughs> yes? Okay, how, um, how potent is the, is the drops? You can use the oregano drops out of these. Oh, you're talking about essential oils? Yes. Oil of oregano. Oil of oregano. Yeah. Did I cover essential oils? I didn't. I covered a little bit. Okay. A little bit. Okay. Oregano is very strong. It needs to be diluted. But I personally would rather recommend the, uh, the whole oregano than the oil of the oregano. Now, you see, when you make essential oils, you're not getting the whole plant. You're getting the, what we call the volatile oils. Okay, so that's using distillation. You extract the the oil properties, but you're not getting the whole plant. When you take a tea, you're getting the whole plant. When you take an extract, you take getting the whole plant. You're getting it more concentrated. But the oil is only one component that you're getting, and it's very strong. So I would uh, recommend, don't take it internally, 
as the essential oil, but take it um, as a tea or take it as, uh, as an extract and uh, that will work better for you. Yes, ma'am. You said not to eat the essential oil. Internally. Now this, this will, listen, I know I'm going against the majority of, how can I put this now, essential oil, uh, multi-level marketing, um, sales represent, representatives, okay? But from my research, um, I have found, and it just, just from a logical perspective, if you know how it's made, and, you, and I, I handle this stuff, it's very strong stuff. If it's eating through plastic, Whoa. what's it gonna do in your stomach if you take it neat? What's it gonna do to your esophagus? It can burn. It can, it can actually corrode your skin, your uh, membranes in your body. Uh, you have this mucosus, mucosa membrane that is uh, uh, made of mucus cells and that can get inflamed. Yes? So if you're making a tea, are you using just the leaves or are you making, using the leaves and the stems? Uh, mainly just use the leaves. Now yeah, you can use other parts, but uh, that's what's usually, when you buy it, you usually find it's in the leaf. Someone else had a question? Yes? How strong is the essential oil compared to the tea? How many times stronger? Okay. Good question. Depends what it is. Let's say peppermint tea. Mm -hmm. You would have to take 28 cups of peppermint tea equivalent to one drop of peppermint oil. Wow. <coughs> okay. 28 cups. It's very, very strong. But the tea is safe for you say? Yes. It's very, yes. Yeah, what would you recommend for a little girl? What would I recommend for a little girl mm -hmm. with, with infection? In the vagina. Okay. Um, well, uh, okay. Yeah. Eight years old. Eight years old. I'm sorry, what was that last bit? She's eight years old. Oh, she's eight years old. Okay. Do you know how she got the infection? But her grandmother said that. He was in, uh, just coming here from uh, his country. What, what, what was a bacterial? Is a bacterial infection? Hmm? Bacterial infection. I don't know. Okay. But she said that you can see it then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you could use a sitz bath. They're very good. I'm. I'm. Sometimes I'm a little hesitant to use things topically for children and in that area that uh, are strong herbs. Um, now some herbs can help heal things over pretty quick but not get to the underlying infection like comfrey for example. In fact there was a lady she had a, her daughter was um, she had some diaper rash and so she used comfrey to help with that and uh, it stitched her uh, vagina together. It's because it was, it's, it's such a cell proliferator. And so uh, you don't use comfrey uh, for things like that. You, you wouldn't use it if you've got underlying infection because it, it will create an abscess. So sometimes the best way to treat things are internally with an infection. Uh, but I would use also hydrotherapy um, is, is very effective. Um, if you can use safely uh, without too much mess, um, a charcoal portal is done the right way can be a help to reduce the inflammation, but it's not getting to the infection itself. I mean, if you want to kill bacteria, for example, um, you, you want to use something that's going to be uh, helping with the immune system, um, like echinacea, for example, golden seal. Yes. What about urinary tract infection? Urinary tract infection? Um, yeah, I have something here for that. Would polyarchonotin affect the child? Eva is good for that. Now, um, I'll just get back to your question, but I'll just answer this one first. 
One of the best things for UTIs that I've found is a hydrotherapy sitz bath. Sitz bath. Now, I'm sorry? Cranberry juice. Yeah, cranberry juice and yuva ursi. Okay. Um, cranberry juice doesn't always work. Um, it, it also depends on the quality of the cranberry juice. Um, if you're getting it from Walmart, you may be a bit disappointed. Um, but if it's pure cranberry juice, it can be a help, and that can also be used in uh, pregnancy. Um, but uh, a sitz bath can help. I've, I've had two UTIs. When I was in the Philippines, we had uh, we had lemon trees. We had thousands of fruit trees. Uh, well, actually, no, not thousands. We had hundreds of fruit trees, and we had 50 lemon trees. And I didn't think you could overdose on lemon juice, so I had about two glasses of lemon water a day, and I didn't realize till later that it changed my pH of my urethra and ended up getting a UTI mm -hmm. infection. So I did a cyst bath within 10 minutes, I was fine. It happened again later, and I did it again, and it was fine within a few minutes. So for UTIs, I, I don't think you can beat um, hydrotherapy. Mm -hmm. Yes, take some cranberry juice, um, but uh, I think you'll find more effective if you do the hydro. I tried, uh, I had UTI before. Yep. I had antibiotics. Uh huh. I combined cranberry juice and apple cider. Yeah, Maybe. apple cider is co commonly used. I After one week it's gone. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm a bit reluctant with yeah. apple cider, but <laughs> if that's if you, the God still blesses when well, we do the best we can. Yes. Recipe that we can use to like clean our vegetables and fruits. Clean your vegetables and fruits. Yes, it's called um, the water of life. <laughs> I mean, yes, I mean, yeah. you know, we have a lot of pesticides. I understand what you're saying. It's pretty hard to get some of that stuff off. Um, I used to work many years ago, 20 years ago, at a um, a fruit orchard. And some sprays are topical, some sprays are systemic. You can't really rinse off systemic sprays because they're going internally. Um, but look, you know, uh, some people use uh, a mild type of soap and water. Some people use the veggie wash. Um, you're gonna get you're gonna get some off. Some people use baking soda. Uh, you could use charcoal, um, but the, you, you are limited. You, you're going to get some of it off, but you're not going to get all of it off. But some of the worst ones to take are what we call the dirty dozen. And I never eat strawberries that are not organic, because that's the worst one. They, they have about 180% more pesticides than any other fruit, and they've got a very thin membrane. and. Um, the people who spray those strawberries, they have about 10 years shorter lifespan. Um, so, people who spray them, they have about 10 years shorter lifespan. Yeah, the, pe the you know, the, 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 the workers that are spraying the pesticides on these strawberries. So, one in the Uh huh. And I feel that I died. I didn't, I don't know how I reached home. Yeah. Wow. And as much as we got pesticides in this country, uh, imported uh, produce on average has about 300% more. So you're better off uh, eating <laughs> the local stuff than getting it imported. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I think it's a time to have a process with the apple cider vinegar. There seems to be some hesitation with it. Okay. And I know where I'm from. <laughs> we are proponents of apple cider vinegar for okay. a whole lot of stuff. What is yeah. the hesitancy here? Okay. Um, okay. Can I get book number two, please? Okay. 
All right. All right. The question is about apple cider vinegar. Now, if you go to councils and diets and foods, there's a section about this. But um, she doesn't give the science, but she does say it causes fermentation. It can ferment salads. Um, okay, some people think apples are better. Now, if you're taking the apple by itself, you can get what is called apple cider, and it's just apple, it's not fermented. Okay, but when you get um, the common apple cider, even if it's from somewhere that's. Uh, who makes Bragg's Aminos? What's that company's name? Bragg's. Oh, Bragg's. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, liquid amino. Sorry. My, my, my mouth went ahead of my brain. Um, but <laughs> yeah, you've got the apple cider Bragg's, right? Or well, Bragg's apple cider. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So uh, if, even that is uh, really from fermented apples, okay? So what they do is they take apples, they, they, you know, why can you make vinegar so cheap? Okay, you take apples that are already spoiled or go and rotten, okay? You crush them and then you get the juice and then you add acetic bacteria and that converts to acetic acid and then it's so strong they have to dilute it 20 times over. Okay, because it's such an incredibly strong acid. Okay, and then you take that. Now, it's already, it already ferments, becomes alcohol. But when you convert it to acetic acid, then it's actually twice spoiled. It's twice spoiled. It's no longer an ether, so it's not going to burn like alcohol. But it, it becomes even more dangerous. Okay. Remember they gave Jesus vinegar? Mm -hmm. What did he do with it? He spat it out. I think that's a good example of what to do. Okay, but somehow we think that apples have a better, uh, they're better for you. Now, it's true, apples are very good for you. They're, they're, they've got good source of nutrition, malic acid, um, high in vitamins, but here's Here's what, um, oh, sorry, it was, um, it was book one, I'm sorry, book one, okay, yeah, okay, thank you, 3.37, okay, all right. Vinegar, here we go. Acetic acid, 4% to 12%. This is a toxic substance that if taken in sufficient quantities produces serious alterations in the coagulative properties of the blood known as disseminated intravascular coagula coagulopathy. Besides anemia, because it, it interferes with iron absorption, and renal failure, renal failure, kidney failure, okay? And then it says, minerals such as potassium, iodine, and magnesium are present in small amounts. Vin vinegar contains no sugars or vitamins, whereas grape and apple juices do. So that's what you should have, the, gra the apple juice, much better. Okay, apart from its flavor, and many find disagreeable, vinegar does not provide any nutritive or dietary benefit. It does not facilitate digestion or improve absorption of other nutrients the way lemons do. To the contrary, vinegar and pickled foods prepared with it have several drawbacks. Um, it erodes dental enamel, it breaks down the mucus barrier, it protects the mucous membrane of the, of the stomach, causes gastritis, it passes to the bloodstream, it causes anemia due to hemolysis, which is destruction of red blood cells. Although some claim healing properties from apple cider vinegar, there is no scientific evidence to confirm it. Okay, so I'll just leave with that and you can read councils and diets and foods under spices and it says about vinegar. Yes? Uh, yes, uh, that, that doesn't surprise me. Cirrhosis of the liver. Now, I, I used to almost drink vinegar. I grew up in England and we had fish and chips. And so my fish and chips would be swimming in vinegar. And I would have mayonnaise and I would drink that. It's full of vinegar. 
and so I've pickled my stomach a few times but um, I can tell you I do it much better without vinegar and if you want to improve um, a little tang to your vegetables improve digestion take lemon juice or add some apple juice apple juice and that will be the best vinegar for you okay yes going back to the essential oils yes uh, what's the difference between uh, well I'm thinking like the can uh -huh. oil that okay. we have there yes versus peppermint let's say okay now there's a, what we call an infused oil okay. where you put like a cane powder into olive oil and you infuse it well that's that's different than a essential oil okay. an essential oil is is a, a volatile oil where you're just getting the you're getting things like um, esters alcohols um, it's monotropines sorry it's, like it's the most powerful it's it's the mo it's really put it simple it's the immune <coughs> system of the plant mm -hmm. that's what it is okay. the immune system of the plant and you you're getting some of that now those things are good okay but there's also other components of the plant that are water based that are not in the oil Okay, so you're getting one part of the plant. It's very, very strong, and you don't need very much. But the best way to use essential oil is either breathing it in or rubbing it externally. Okay, now some people think that if you put it on the feet, it will absorb better. You heard about that? You haven't heard about that? Yes. yes. You have, have heard about it. Okay. All right. Well, here's how it works. It doesn't absorb better through the feet. It just appears to. It's, it, you see, the feet, this is the, the rationale is, well, the feet, you've got more uh, little pores in the feet. You have got more sweat glands in the feet. And so it goes through the pores. It absorbs that way. Okay. Well, if you look at your anatomy, you'll find that your hands and your feet have five layers of skin, right? Five layers. And the water repels what? Oil. So if you get water and oil, what happens? They, right. So how they're getting in the body is through the lungs. Respiration. Yes. Now, Mary Magdalene, she, she put the oil in his feet. She put it in his hair. Okay. And it filled the room. And you know what she used? She used spikenard. Spikenard. Why did she use spikenard? Spikenard, the alabaster box mm -hmm. that broke open, that was worth 300 denarii, was it? Denarii? That, um, that was equivalent in today's value at maybe around $50,000. It says it was a costly sacrifice. Inspiration tells us it was a costly sacrifice. Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Good question. Spikenard is the best herb to, trans to, to, to transition someone from life to death. It's used in severe stress, such as childbirth. We recommend spikenard from childbirth. But it's probably going to be more expensive no, right. now. <laughs> no, it's a lot cheaper. Oh, is it? No, you don't have to part with $50,000. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe 50, and you could you could get a decent amount. In fact, where I used to live, it grew, grew wild. Yeah. Just, just a question. Yes. Um, do you have something? For those who are traveling 
regularly and changing time zones. And yes. feel that these changes of three, four hours. Yes, I'm familiar with I'm familiar with that. I've done my share of traveling. <laughs> Believe me. Um, one of the best things to help with that <coughs> is a blue light. Blue light. You know those therapeutic blue lights? They help resynchronize. See, we have what we call melanopsin receptors in the eye. And see, here's, here's how it works. When you go out in the sunlight, the light hits your eye. Okay? And um, what happens is we have a optic chiasm. So the, the, you know, the optic nerve, it crosses from my eyes, it, it crosses over to the other side of the brain. And where it crosses, where it meets, right, um, right adjacent to that, uh, underneath that, is the pineal gland. The pineal gland. Pineal gland secretes melatonin, right? So light alters the secretion and the timing of melatonin, which helps us to sleep. All right, and when you're constantly moving about and you're getting jet lagged, your body resynchronizes itself through light. So, the best way to do it, get outside and walk, and then get a blue light. And uh, anyway, I'm not saying which one is better than others, but it can help resynchronize because when the blue light hits you, it hits the melanopsin receptors, and it causes. Uh, the eyes to produce serotonin which gets converted to melatonin okay and so that can help you sleep is that uh, sunglasses or something? no it's not sunglasses it's, it's a visual light that emits um, similar frequencies ultraviolet light to the sun and you uh, you just have it about three feet away and uh, it can help resynchronize your, your, your circadian rhythm okay Yes. Because it was, we were at some lectures here, but because the blue light is more what you see in the morning when the sun's coming up, and the yellow tongue lights are what you see in the evening when the sun is setting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. What about the spike now? Yes. You indicated that it trans <coughs> it's best not to transition from life, life to, to death. death. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus was heading where? To death. To death. Yeah. Okay. So, they used to use alcohol for that. Remember? Strong drink. Give to someone that's ready to perish. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Because it numbs the pain. It, it, you, it helps deal with that pain. Okay? Spike nod helps in a similar manner. It's helping with pain relief and it's dealing with anxiety, stress. Spike nod helps with the acute stress. All right. Uh, my wife used this when she was pregnant the second time. Spike nod and then score vine and red leaf, ras a red raspberry leaf. Um, really helped her. Yeah. Yeah. No. If it were me, I would take it. <laughs> internally. Yes. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Uh, you know the Chinese. You are full of questions. <laughs> <laughs> the Chinese has liniments. Yes. Like they have different. Yes. Sort of, uh, uh huh. What do you call that? Is it oh, yeah. an essential oil or something? Liniments are topical things you put on the skin. Right. Okay. Um, it's somewhat similar to a compress, but you can use oil. Um, uh, if I don't know if we'll use a liniment, um, I probably I don't know if I'll I'll see. I may throw in one by tomorrow. We'll see. But uh, they're helpful externally. Yes. Yes, ma'am. For what? Lymph nodes. Lymph nodes. What herbs are good for lymph nodes? 
Listen, uh, this is where I feel, um, you know, herbs are not the best in this particular area, okay? Now, herbs can help with detoxification, they can help with liver function, and they can help clean up some of the toxins. But your, your, your lymph nodes or your lymph vessels lie adjacent to muscle tissue and blood vessels. And so the only way to move the lymph along is exercise. That's the only way to get it activated. All right, so that's the very best way to help with the lymph. All right, and you can get lymphatic ma massage. I wouldn't get it done too aggressively because you don't want too much release. You, you, you just want a gentle, little by little. What's that? How much exercise is sufficient? How much exercise is sufficient? Listen, um, as much as, as you are able, um, according to your ability, okay? So, uh, for someone that's uh, maybe 400 pounds, and is a walking time bomb, they may only be able to do 10 minutes a day. For other people, they may do two hours a day. Remember Jesus said, I walk yesterday, today, and tomorrow. <laughs> and he said, arise, take up your bed, and walk. <laughs> You see, Jesus always picked someone up that was stationary. You see, you go to some of these, you see some of these televangelists, they put them on the floor. <laughs> they don't lift them off the ground, they <laughs> send them to the ground. Okay, not Jesus' method. Yeah, walking is part, actually I had a friend, I tell you this story, it's an amazing story, true story. And he, um, he ended up with a severe case of depression. So bad, he admitted himself to a psychiatric ward because he was afraid he would commit suicide. And he told me that he sat, that's not sat on the bed, he lay on the bed and he stared at the ceiling for 18 months straight. That's all he did. He stared at the ceiling other than go to the bathroom and eat and sleep. And one day he heard a voice in his head. Walk. And so he walked. And he kept walking. And he walked all day. And he walked the next day. And within a short time he felt so much better that he walked to check himself out. <laughs> and they said, what are you doing? He said, I'm, 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 I'm leaving. He said, well, you, you can't leave. He said, I check myself in. I can check myself out. <laughs> and he left a new man because he realized by walking that the voice he was listening to was God. Mm -hmm. You see? And because he felt he was lost mm -hmm. and God said, no. <laughs> what you you're my child you're saved you know he he realized that God hadn't given up on him and uh, he related his story to, to Nebuchadnezzar eating grass for seven years yeah. oh by the way Nebuchadnezzar was on a herb diet for seven years yes Yes. He came to. Uh, 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 there's a sermon right there, brother. <laughs> yes, man. You know, we did it yesterday at Elder Bear. We did it yesterday. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. I lost my folder, so I'm just trying to get my notes back. So I just oh. wanted to know. I know you did. Um, you did you we can get. We can get notes for you. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I would appreciate that because mm -hmm. I wanted to know exactly what that was for. I thought you were going to say, I lost my elderberry. Can you give me some more? <laughs> yeah. Did you like the elderberry? I love it. Okay, good. And put the honey in. They are sweet. 
They are sweet. Okay. So, so uh, sorry, go yeah. ahead. So never uh. exercise to make, make tired something. No? Well, exercise tired people, listen. <coughs> okay, let me tell you this about exercise. If if you the yeah, exercise tires everyone, but listen. By exercising and getting tired, it recharges your nervous system. So you're tired for a time, but then it gives you more energy. If you lie on a hospital bed for four hours and don't move, you just lie in bed for four, sorry, not four hours, four days, you will lose 20% of your mitochondria. Your mitochondria is your little energy organelles in the cell that help power the body. They give uh, energy through ATP. So you can lose that. You can, listen to this, you can double you can double your mitochondria in six months on a good exercise program. And one of the best ways to help depression is exercise. Okay, now if you want a herb for depression, um, probably the king of herbs most well known for this is St. John's Wort. And um, this is very controversial. I will tell you things that you probably won't find so much online. Um, but St. John's Wort is more effective than Prozac as an antidepressant. All right. And um, St. John's Wort? All right. Okay. This looks interesting. I, who was teaching the class this morning? Okay. All right. Ten promises. You know the commandments are ten promises? That's right, yeah. Well, who can tell me what the first commandment is? No one answered me correctly. <laughs> that, the what? That's the first word. That brought the out, you right, brought the out the house of bondage. She said, what's the first commandment? Well, it is part of the first commandment. It's the very first thing that's meant. No, here, here's, here's why I said that. Because if you don't see that as the commandments, then you see them as duties rather than promises. You see? God says, I've bought you out, therefore, you're not going to have these things. You, 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 you it's, it's in more in a positive statement of He's expressing His trust in what you're not going to do because He has saved you, right? Because He saved us, right? Therefore, we'll not do these things. Okay, <coughs> listen. The Gospel has more to do with the health of, the of, of our physiology than about any other subject or all other subjects combined. All right? I see them being forgiven and take up the hand. That's right. Why do you say that? Why do I say that? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Listen, it says it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. Now, the, the, the most, the highest expression of God's love for us is forgiveness, right? Forgiveness. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, okay? When they were getting ready to stone that prostitute or woman accused in adultery, should I say, um, she confessed her sin when she knew something. What was it? That she was forgiven. You see, forgiveness has two parts. It has pardon, 
and reconciliation. Okay. We're told in the spirit of prophecy that after Jesus said, your sins are forgiven, that she, she broke down in tears the love that God showed her and she confessed the sin. Often we think of that verse, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just forgive us and cleanse us. And we often think that forgiveness only happens if we confess. But there's two aspects to, to forgiveness. In fact, we do it ourselves. If you, if, if, if you do me an injury, can I forgive you without you confessing? So if I can forgive you without confessing, can God do the same? Mm -hmm. But there needs to be reconciliation, right? Mm -hmm. So there's two aspects to it. There is one in the atonement aspect of pardon, and there's one in the putting away of the sin because we've received the pardon. That's why it says God justifies what? The godly or ungodly? What does it say in Romans? The ungodly. That's what it says. It says he justifies the ungodly. Read it in Romans. You see, none of us are godly. <laughs> okay? That's the only way he can justify us because his word creates it. Do you understand? The word of God creates that which he speaks. You see? That's the only way any of us... See, God's goodness leads to realizing our unworthiness and His goodness in spite of our unworthiness. And it leads us to gratitude and heartfelt appreciation. That's what it leads to. In fact, the word forgiveness, there's two different words for forgiveness. One is to do with pardon and one is to do with putting away. When Jesus said, go and sin no more, it was the second aspect of forgiveness. He's already pardoned her, therefore she can put away her sin. And often, why I'm saying this is often because people are still trying to do something to bring God close to them, not realizing that He's already shown this amazing grace to them. We live in this atmosphere of grace, you see. It's, it's permeated, I mean, everyone is touched by His grace. Not everyone responds to that grace. But when, you, when, when people tap into that grace, then things change. Their mind change, their heart change. You see, they got the power to change. Without grace, we can't change. You see, look, I've been doing health work for many years and I found this to be true, without exception that most people know why they're sick. They know why they're sick, but you know what they lack? They lack motivation to do what they know they should do. Is that true in our own lives? So, that's where grace comes in, because it gives us the power to change, right? The goodness of God leads to repentance. Yes, sir. Just to say the same thing in the Old Testament. Yes. Psalm 130. Yes. If you, Lord, should, should look at iniquity, O oh Lord, who could stand? Who can stand? Yes. But there is forgiveness with you yes. that you may be feared. So basically, the yes. fear of God doesn't come because He is severe. Yes. But it comes because He yeah. forgives. That's right. So it's his it's his nature. It is his it's nature. his nature to forgive. He's forgiven, giving a nature. Yes. yes. Makes us that we that's why fear. that's why that's why he says, "Be ye reconciled to God, for God is what reconciled unto you." He's already reconciled to you, but most people don't realize it. They're still. What's that? One thirty verse. <coughs> mm -hmm. So, when you're dealing with people who are sick, I mean, there's, there's a huge ministerial part that is often neglected, you know, and when they start to see, look, God is working with me, I took this herb and it's starting to do something, then they have more interest in the spiritual 
side of things. And they see that God is... If, he, if He's helping me physically, maybe He's helping me spiritually. You see? Yeah. So I can't underestimate this aspect of ministry. Because forgiveness changes us physiologically. You see? Without forgiveness, our immune system is suppressed. She says, fear, doubt, distrust, remorse, all weaken the life forces. That's what Ellen White says. You see? And God has to heal that. So He has to give us His love. He has to give us that forgiveness. Um, people, forgiveness is healing, isn't it not? It's, we have to, we, we forgive others because we ourselves are forgiven. If we're not forgiven, we can't forgive others. Simple as that. And a lot, I'm saying that because a lot of people have sickness as a result of not forgiving someone they love. It suppresses. You, you know, I have, a, I have some research showing that five minutes of anger, you know what does the immune system? Five minutes, it suppresses the immune system for five hours. Five minutes of anger. Right? That puts a new spin on that text that says, um, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. <laughs> okay? <laughs> all right? Because uh, you're carrying all that negativity with you. So, it can do more damage on your immune system than a bowl full of white sugar. So, what happened to people that go anger, go to sleep, and wake up and do the whole of their life? They do it all their life. Anger. Anger. Yes, I meet people like that. Um, they, uh, yeah, well, I'm not, I, 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 I'm, I'm not pointing any, any, I'm not pointing to anyone, looking at anyone. Uh, but, 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 but the longer that you suppress anger, the more it suppresses you. All right? So your immune system will go down. You may have some autoimmune disease. You may have some blood pressure problems, some sleep disorders, mm -hmm. some diabetes. You may have some prolonged depression. Mm. Let me ask you, did Jesus ever suffer sickness? No. Did he suffer sickness? Okay. Okay. Let, 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 let me ask you. Okay. Did. Okay. Did Jesus only suffer for moral transgression? No. Or did he suffer also physical transgression? <laughs> okay, Matthew eight seventeen. Anyone got a Bible? Matthew eight seventeen. He took our infirmities, it says, and bore our sicknesses. Matthew eight seventeen. Matthew eight seventeen. Remember, remember this guy here. The mighty fulfilled, which was spoken he by took Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities. And beer, our sickness. sickness. He carried. He carried. He took our diseases. He he suffered our diseases were placed upon him. His sicknesses went upon him. Did he have hypertension? Did he have hypertension? He had hypertension. Didn't he? Okay. If you get capillaries rupture in your forehead, are you gonna get, are you gonna have hypertension? <laughs> the highest one. The highest one. Thank you very much. If you faint because you lose blood carrying a cross, what are you gonna have then? Hypotension. And he had hypoxia too. Yeah, what if you put a nail through your, your hand? What if, what if you're hanging on the cross 
trying to breathe. You can't breathe. Respiratory distress. Respiratory. Okay. What about dehydration on your kidneys? What about your bones out of joint? He suffered depression. Yeah. He said, like he said, uh, Lord, the wife that forsaken me, before he said, I'm exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. You tell me that's not depression? Yeah. He suffered these diseases that we have. That means everything you go through physically or spiritually, he feels it. He feels it. You see. He's not looking on as a casual observer. He, he feels that. And we're told every pain, everything goes back to the heart of God. You know that? Everything we... Why, does God, why did God make the heart that, that has a circular... Uh, circ, a, a, a circuitry system that goes back to the heart? It pumps out life and it comes back waste. He's constantly giving his life. He's constantly giving to us to, to us and he's taking our sin. That's what forgiveness means. It means giving something for. Forgive. Give for. He's giving his life in exchange for all our sin. It's a circuitry process. See, all sin goes back to the heart of God. All suffering goes back to His heart. You see, and that means He can relate to every experience we go through. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. What, a, what a wonderful Savior we serve. He is touched, it says, with the feelings of infirmity. How is He touched? How can He be touched unless He feels it? Can you be touched with someone and not feel it? No. <laughs> he feels it. Yes, ma'am. So Christ then had a, a severe headache, a migraine, let's say, uh -huh. for him coming to feed the 5,000. Uh -huh. Let's just say, would he have prayed and it would have gone away or would he have used natural herbs for it to subside? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, he used to heal himself. <laughs> he is life unborrowed and underived. He was constantly receiving strength. And from his father. He was receiving power from his father. Um, and would he use natural remedies? When he is life, he, he enters into someone's presence and they're cured. His touch. He is life. Yes. He went to pray. Yes. He prayed. That's right. He cried. He, yes. And he said, Father, if it is possible, change uh -huh. the one but not my will. That's right. That's because he failed. Uh huh. That's right. This pain, you know what I mean? Like you said, yeah. we take our pain, That's our, it. our sin, That's it. he give us justice. You know what I mean? He justifies us and he take our sin that's it. To, to save us. So that's why he feel it. Because yeah. he cried. He prayed. That's right. He prayed that that can give him strength. In fact, only he can feel the full strength of sin because he had to pay the ultimate penalty that we never had to pay. It's amazing. Um, no, no, no. Anyway, um, we sort of diversified a little bit <laughs> <Yeah>. there. But, <laughs> but anyway. Um, it's, it's sometimes I like to sort of throw a few things in to make us appreciate what he went through. Uh -huh. Yes. Bentonite clay. Oh yes, but see, he's applying that to, to someone else. Not to himself. He didn't need it. Yeah, yeah. But just like he didn't need to be baptized for himself. Okay. Everything he did was for us. Everything he did was for us. Okay. Including giving us herbs. 
Okay. <laughs> um, what's that? Do I have spike knot? No, I do not have spike knot. But I can. Uh, we, but the but Yuchi Pine says spike knot. <laughs> so, um, but I can I can uh, I can tell you if you want to use spike knot, uh, pregnancy is one of the best times on the, uh, three or four weeks before delivery. Let's have a fifteen minute break. Um, I, uh, I I I I I'm afraid maybe I've worn out the saints of the Most High talking too long, so let's have a 15 minute break and um, get some exercise, some water again. Are we, are we on? Or are we muted? We're on? Okay, good. Okay, well, um, we're going to make a salve recipe and you've got a few recipes here and I'll be honest with you, um, my recipes have morphed over the years, so in fact, I've got a completely different pain recipe than the one right here. <laughs> but that's okay, you know, um, herbalists, they practice. <laughs> so, um, it's not to say the other one won't work, but I've been really trying to find what is the best combination, what, what, what could I have the most confidence in if I have pain? What would be the hardest hitting so it could really knock you out um, some serious pain and so uh, the recipe we have here it says pain salve is not the same recipe that I'm going to give you okay so you can you can scrap that out completely okay <laughs> now so making salves are really simple and this is probably the simplest way to do it so you can have variations of this and we haven't infused the oil okay so you can, you can use the oil to infuse before you make your salve. Okay, so that means that you could, let's say you want to make a calendula salve, you could, you know, do what I said yesterday and stuff the jar of calendulas with oil, put it in the crock pot, surround it with water, and then in a couple of days you can strain that, use that oil instead of just regular plain olive oil. Or, or you may want to use comfrey, or you may want to use um, cayenne. In fact, cayenne is um, is my favorite um, <laughs> oil that I, I use. I infuse with my pain salve now. I infuse that with uh, cayenne, and I use one hundred and ten thousand heat units of cayenne. Huh? Habanero peppers or just cayenne? That's cayenne. Yeah. So, in the kind, do you use the powder, or you? Add I it? I use the powder, but I um, I end up when it when it's infused, all the powder goes to the bottom, and so I can just strain it off without having all the bits with it. So yeah, that's a good thing. If you if you make an extract, it's it's hard to work with powders, but if you make it an infused oil, you can still use them. All right, because they're just going to settle, and then you just drain because it, you know it's gone to the bottom so you'll get maybe a tiny drip drab here and there but um, for the most part you can still use use that works very well so where do you get your um, cayenne? okay there's uh, now Star West has it but it's not as strong I'm oh, sorry I'm um, not Star West I, I meant to say mountain rose herbs um, Mountain Rose Herbs is, uh, they only use about 35,000, I think sometimes they have a 90,000 and Star West has 110,000 uh, units, so I use, use the stronger one, mm -hmm. okay, so, but just to keep it simple, I'm just going to use um, olive oil, uh, to me this doesn't look like olive oil, but um, it has olive oil on the front, so, <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we'll use that. All right. Now, when you're making a salve, it's important to keep in mind that um, you're going to uh, need the right ratio of oil and uh, beeswax. So, if you're in Alabama here, it gets pretty hot and humid, you may want to use a one to four ratio. Um, and so that means that it's going to be harder to melt at room temperature. Okay, now 
snaps can still melt, but um, you know it, it makes it more solid the more uh, wax you have uh, in proportion to the oil. So if you're in a cold climate, you could probably get away with one, one to eight. Um, so sometimes, in North Carolina, I did about one to five, one to six, and so that worked really well. And sometimes if it's too hard, it's, it's hard to get, um, get out, it's a little difficult. And if it's too soft, it's a little runny and you don't want that either. So, um, you know, if you want a mill of the ra average mill of range between one to five to one to six will probably work just fine. All right, so this, this, uh, I'm just going to do one to four because I'm in Alabama. <laughs> okay, so I've got half a cup of uh, wax here, so I'm going to pour all that in. Thank you, Lydia, for doing all this hard work. It doesn't usually come like this. Um, it was in a solid form. And by the way, uh, you can get pallets. They're probably some of the best things to use, the pallets. All right. So now we're going to use two cups of olive oil. So that gives us four times the amount of oil to the amount of wax, right? So uh, let's see how this goes. This is one cup. Now, this is so easy to do, a child can do this. It's really, really simple. In fact, that is your two main ingredients. Your oil and your, and your wax, right? That's your two main ingredients, your two main base ingredients. Because once you've got the base ingredients, then you can mix whatever oils you want with that. And when I'm talking about mix whatever oils, I'm talking specifically about essential oils. Did you uh, turn yes, it's, it was on, did I? Oh, maybe I turned it off. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, put it on maybe about medium. Uh, you don't want it to sort of bring it to a boil because um, if it gets too if it changes temperature from hot to high hot too quickly to to be in set, it can crack, and you get all these cracks appear. Um, sometimes um, I may be in a little bit of hurry, and um, I don't uh, I don't really have it. Uh, I have it on too, a little bit too high a temperature and it cools down too quickly and then that, that can just affects the cosmetic. It doesn't affect the, the actual effectiveness. But once that starts dissolving, and this by the way will probably take about 10 minutes, something like that, then it's a, that's, a, that's when you can use the essential oils. Now, you don't want to have the temperature too high when you use essential oils because uh, you can destroy some of the delicate properties. Remember we're using this externally so it's a bit different than taking it internally. So if you're, if you're using herbs at a high temperature it doesn't matter about, you, about going up to 150, 200 degrees because um, you don't need those antiseptic properties for your skin. Okay, you take it internally but uh, for, for salves, it's more important, okay? So, you may want to write this down, but I, uh, I love to use frankincense. I, I didn't bring all my oils with me, but I love frankincense as a pain reliever. It's excellent for pain. In fact, it's one of the best things I know for pain. And uh, I think maybe this is one of the reasons why they gave it to Jesus because he was a pain reliever, the ultimate pain reliever. <laughs> and it can heal some of the deepest wounds that nothing else will heal. Uh, it is highly anti-inflammatory. 
Now there are six different kinds of frankincense. Uh, the one they use in biblical times was uh, Boswellia catariae and that um, that is often used today even for meditative purposes and they used to use frankincense on the showbread remember that? They used to anoint the priest with frankincense they used to put it as one of four parts on the altar of incense in fact it would permeate the whole camp but it was not essential oil it was um, it was either as a resin or an infused oil okay a resin was, yeah, was sprinkled on the show bread. Okay, but you can also infuse it and make it part of anointing. All right. So because right, frankincense. Okay. Also. Is that the same as Boswell? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. It's the same. Same. It's the tree, and they tap it. Yes, and it was very expensive in the time of Jesus. Um, it's still pretty expensive. You may pay up to a hundred dollars for a little bottle of frankincense. Um, yeah, but um, thanks to, well, no thanks to, but because um, the Middle East problems with ISIS and everything, it's getting, it's been uh, a problem with getting frankincense. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, this is part of the Boswellia tree, and uh, it is highly, highly powerful stuff. And do you know that frankincense is an antidepressant? So when they used to burn the incense, the incense would permeate the whole camp. And so, as you got close to the sanctuary, or even far away from the sanctuary, you would smell this beautiful aroma. Mm -hmm. And frankincense would be in there. And so, it would make you feel uh, that you're entering into a sacred... You would end up, uh, even today, they use it for meditative purposes. It has a beautiful smell to it. Would you would you like to smell it? Yes. Okay. I will I will keep mine closed because uh, I think we have one already open here. It's also anti-inflammatory. It's anti-inflammatory. Yep. Oh, I I knew that wasn't frankincense. I thought, what is that? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, isn't there one in here? I'm sure I saw one here. Ginger. Okay. My my eyes. Are, okay, that's my one. Okay, I'm gonna have to gonna have to open my one. Okay. Okay. Want to pass that around? And uh, this. You don't want to drink, as I said, this is not for internal use. It smells like um, evergreen. Evergreen. Now, I'm using, now, uh, in my other recipe I use at home, I use a couple more, two or three more uh, essential oils. But I'm using ginger, frankincense, clove oil, oregano. I also use eucalyptus, but I can't seem to find that here. Do you want some eucalyptus? Oh, this says eucalyptus, clove, and ginger. That's a mixture. I know it's a mixture. Some yeah, I have some of them. You have some? Okay. Okay. And that. What we were putting in there again? Frankincense. Frankincense. Now let me just let me just give you a principle first. When you're making a salve, you don't use essential oils more than five percent of the total volume of your salve. Now, ideally you want between two to three percent. Two to three percent. If it's more than five percent, it's going to be too strong. Okay? Do I have any open? Um, I thought it was going around. No? There it is. It's over there. In fact, you may be able to smell it from over there. 
So you said it's for pain, right? It smells nice. Too. Yes, it's 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 for inflammation, for for pain, for depression. It's a, it's anti anxiolytic It's uh, it's helpful for wounds. Uh, Wounds, it's anti wounds. <coughs> wounds. W O U N D S. Not directly, no. This is why we're using a sap. Okay, thank you very much. We're making a sap. So. Okay, now we are using a double boiler. So we've got, we've got water underneath. And uh, we don't want too high a heat. The reason we're using a double boiler is to protect the salve from direct heat. We want to just use it indirectly. And this, okay, this is a medium temperature, so I, I'd say we, we're around 200 degrees here. All right. And I'm still waiting for this to dissolve so but it should in the next five minutes we should uh, we should so have that water dissolve with it and then oil with wax? No. No. The water the, there's no water in in the sap the water is surrounding it's a two pots you see oh, oh. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> it does doesn't it i'm thinking the wax yeah. should be sinking but yeah <laughs> it's an illusion yeah that is a good yeah. <laughs> All right. So. Oh, okay. You want to know it, so you want to burn your. We just yes, we just want to make sure that we gently apply the heat, and it's starting to dissolve. And um, wax, wax helps to take the oils into the skin, uh, diffuse them at a steady rate. Uh, but it is waxy. Now, once you've once you've just got this base, then you can add anything you want. So you could make a, a breathing salve. You could make an insect repellent salve. You could make a muscle relieving salve, a pain salve, inflammatory salve, antiviral salve, beauty salve, burn salve, whatever salve you want to make. You can. You can't, oh, okay, I've used coconut oil, it's harder to work with, even though it goes hard at room temperature. When you, um, when you work it as a salve, it tends to be softer, it's, it's not the same consistency. So, um, I mean, I have a coconut salve recipe here with coconut oil, okay, but it doesn't quite have the consistency I'm looking for. You can you can rub it in, yeah. Um, I just haven't had the very best success with it. I mean, I I'm, I've I've found that uh, this works a little better. But you can use you can use um, other oils. You can use almond oil. You can use um, uh, some sunflower, grapeseed oil, whatever oil you have. It does. I, I prefer extra virgin cold pressed uh, olive oil. What texture does the grapeseed oil get? What texture? You'll have to do it and find out. But it's the oils are, are similar uh, texturally. I I just I haven't spent time using grapeseed oil, but any oil will work. It will still go hard at room temperature because of the wax. It's just two ingredients: beeswax. Beeswax. You want me to write that up on the board? Okay. Is it difficult to make an essential oil? Is it a complicated process? Not really. If you've got a distillation, um, yeah, you need a distiller. Uh, see, distillation wasn't invented till the 11th century. So, oh, oh, it's good, it's fun. Okay. Nice. Okay. All right, now it's starting to dissolve a little bit. I wanted to ask you on this one, we're using arnica. 
and the coconut oil uh -huh. infuse the arnica flowers into yes, the coconut. Yes, that's right. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, it's starting to slowly dissolve. All right. So once you've got your base, then you can um, use whatever oils that you want for whatever effects you need. So uh, if I'm using a breathing salve, I would use something like eucalyptus, some pine, maybe some cedar. Uh, if I'm using it for burns, I would use peppermint oil, I'd use lavender. Um, I've even used manuka honey in that as well. Um, if you're using it, f or, or calendula is another one. If you're using it for, say, um, let's say, let's say you want to make an anti-inflammatory salve. In fact, a lot of the pain-killing uh, agents, like the ones I'm using, are anti-inflammatory. So frankincense is one, eucalyptus, clove oil, um, ginger. They're very effective for both pain and inflammation. Of course, inflammation causes pain, but there are some times we have pain that is <coughs> due from mechanical damage, tissue damage, you know, knocks and bruises. Our kids are always bumping into something, so we always like to have <laughs> some pain salve around. Yes? The anti-inflammatory, you said eucalyptus, ginger, or what? What was the third one? Eucalyptus, ginger, frankincense, uh, clove, um, and w uh, wintergreen. Wintergreen is another one. All right. Very, very powerful, especially for muscles. Don't want to take it internally. It can kill you, but it's very good externally. Oh, there we go. This is the, this is the real thing. Yep, that's the real thing. First cold press extra. Where'd you? Yep, that. See the color difference. As soon as I saw that, I'm thinking that looks like canola oil. <laughs> okay, so. We've got our, okay, if you can hear me in the back, if you could keep, uh, keep the noise down. Um, now we can take this off. Okay, does anyone have any pain? Pain. Pain, anyone got some pain? Okay, all right. Um, we are going to help with your pain. All right, I'm just going to leave that there. So, right now this will probably be about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so we're just going to let that sit for a minute. Um, but what we're going to do is add some essential oils. So if I've got in there, uh, let me see, I used two cups of olive oil, right? Then I used half a cup of beeswax. So how much essential oil do you think I should use? Two cups? Two drops. Oh, two, 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 two drops. Okay, not quite. Okay, what was the ratio I said? Two to three percent. Two to three percent. Right, exactly. So, no more than five percent. No more five percent. So what would that be? Two cups is how many ounces? 16, right? Then I've got, that's total, yes. So I've got another four ounces of wax, so that's 20 ounces. So on average I need half an ounce. That will give me two and a half percent, right? So half an ounce. So what's half an ounce? It's about 15 milliliters, all right? So that would be half, that would be equipped. All the, all the oils combined would make up about half of this bottle. All right, does that make sense? All right, you got that? It's a good thing we didn't do five percent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, let me see here. I, I want to get one of those, um, yeah, give me, give me a tablespoon. Give me a tablespoon. Now, 
a tablespoon is going to be, I think it's around five milliliters. Have I got that right, Cook? A teaspoon is five. Fifteen is a tablespoon. Okay. All right. So that's only one tablespoon then, right? Because yeah. Okay. Because that is. But that's um, half, two of those. Would that be right? Yeah. Doesn't so it would be right? Okay, it just seemed a little more. <laughs> okay, now when I do it, I do it in large amounts, so I'm not used to doing it in so small amount here. So, um, okay, now I've got oregano, clove, I've got eucalyptus, ginger, and I got frankincense. Okay, so how do I know what proportions to take? Okay, now oregano you don't need as much as something like eucalyptus. So my eucalyptus and my frankincense are going to be the two two main main ones. Okay, and the others are going to be minor. So the ginger, the clove, the oregano. So if I do one part oregano, one part clove, one part ginger, I can do two to three parts eucalyptus and, and the same with frankincense. Okay, so that means that two-thirds of my total volume of oil is going to be eucalyptus. So this is going to be one-third, this is going to be one-third of frankincense. Okay, and then the other third, I'm going to combine the three. So that would be a teaspoon, right? Do we have a teaspoon? A teaspoon of each of those. Do we have, can we get a teaspoon? So I'm going to use a teaspoon of eucalyptus, teaspoon of frankincense, teaspoon of all the other three combined and that will give me a tablespoon which will be 15 milliliters which will be 1 40th of this total mixture. Okay, we got that? Okay, now one teaspoon eucalyptus, one teaspoon of frankincense and one teaspoon of the, of the other three combined. Okay? So we're just going to wait for our uh, teaspoon here. Did everyone smell the frankincense? Yes. Okay. I'm going to put this by my bed tonight. I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> Do you know, have you seen diffusers? They send the oil out in the, uh, out in the air? Get one of those. They are really good. Really, really good. So that's what we're going to use. Question. Yes, question. So all of these mix that you're talking about is for a pain salve? This is a pain salve. Okay. Thank you. That is correct. Yep. And then guess what you're going to have? You're going to have a sample. So we've got all these little boxes here. So you could do some like wintergreen? Yeah, you could do some wintergreen. Yeah, I. Um, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. So um, now, if you use plastic, if you use, if can you hear me back there? If you use plastic, you got to be more careful because plastic can dissolve with essential oils, um, like polyurethane. Okay. So what? What I do is I use um, a, a resistant plastic, it's called polypropylene, polypropylene and that is resistant to essential oils so it won't dissolve the plastic, you won't have plastic components in the sap, alright? Oh thank you, okay, appreciate it. So where can we buy those containers that we need to? Okay, uh, my helper here will tell you all about that. Um, and I have bought them from the same place, but you go ahead, Lydia, you give me... So what are they called in your, before I use <laughs> um, I usually get my jars from SKS bottles, but these were ordered off of Amazon because you can get them faster. <laughs> so you can just shop around for the best price. Yeah. Okay, so what do we'll, we'll you call those containers? <laughs> 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 These are just tin. These are just tin. What ounce is that one? Just like this is. This is like an ounce.
Oh, yeah, about an ounce. We've got 20 ounces, so we should be able to get one ounce um, each for you all. So See these plastic things up here? They can dissolve. I've 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 seen them dissolve. Is that plastic or glass? Plastic. Oh, you're talking about the pipette? Yeah. Um. I'd have to check. I'm talking about the top, you know, the rubber bit. Oh, yeah, they can How many ounces of dough do you have here, please? Sorry, the rest of the two. What's that? These are one ounce. One ounce, sorry. Oh, Thank you. Hang on. Where did I. Okay. Oh, sure. So you said uh, uh, you call it two strands in a sense? Yeah, those, those are my two. Yeah, and for two. three others you have oregano oil? Yeah, oregano. I'm using clove oil and ginger. Ginger. Yeah, in fact, I'm gonna. Yeah, ginger. You know why I use ginger? Because ginger helps circulation. And that is the best way to bring healing to any part of the body, is to increase circulation. Ginger brings circulation. Yes, it is because cayenne does extra things that ginger doesn't do. Um, cayenne will also block P substance, which is a pain neurotransmitter, and it can it can help relieve pain uh, through the nervous system. So, yes, which hazel? Which hazel? Which hazel? And and huh? I'm sorry? White will it? No. Um, will, white bark? White oak bark. I've never, I've never used it for that. And most which hazel? Which hazel is, is, is very good um, on horse nut. Horse, horse chestnut. Horse chestnut is is uh, okay. So all I have to do now is put my oil in. Um, pour the oil into a glass container because um, if not, you can dissolve the plastic. Now, right now, I'm racing against time, so I've got about five minutes before this is going to start to. Um, it's going to start to get harder. So we got that because uh, this is a bit cooler. When it goes in, it's going to stick some of it to the sides, and that will make it go faster. So, would you like to do the honors? Okay. <laughs> Smells really good. Okay. So you just put it in the container and just, just put it in the container? And it will take it later. Yes, you you it will in about five minutes this is gonna be hot. It's, it, it, well hard it mean meaning it's gonna solidify. It's gonna solidify. It's not gonna be super hard, but it's gonna it's not gonna be liquid anymore. Okay. Yeah, it's it's starting to change. It's starting to change. Sorry, I probably I may have may have um, not give you enough time there because I was too busy talking. But oh, I don't have the accent. You have the accent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, my accent's Australian. Uh, but if I went to Australia, that's say, where are you from? because I've traveled a lot of different places, so everywhere I go, I'm a hybrid. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now if you, if you get a boo-boo or you meet someone that's got pain, you, you've got a medicine right for them, ready to go. How long it will be preserved for If you properly preserve these, they can last up to five years. 
Now, to, 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 extra, to add extra preservation, you may want to use vitamin E oil. It's helpful for that. Um, yeah. How much? That's a little bit. Like that, maybe one. Um, you can use. Let's see. You, you probably with this mixture use about half an ounce, something like that, the whole amount. How much of the salad would you apply? How much what? Oh, you only need a little bit, just just enough to cover the area. Yeah. Can you apply heat over it if you wanted, like uh, heating? Can you apply heat over it? If you wanted to, I don't know. You um. Well, you don't really need to for this, yes, sir. Let's say uh, I was to make something like this, and um, somebody wanted to make a donation for something like this. How much would you let him go for? Because I know that's a lot of oil you are in. Oh, at least a thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, look, I tell you what they, I, t I tell you what they mainly retail for. Salves. What is this? One ounce? Probably, probably uh, somewhere around ten dollars for one ounce. For one ounce. Yeah. In fact, when I make them, I make them like uh, fifty at a time. How much it lasts a person? I go one ounce like that. Well, it, it's hard to say. I, I make them in four ounces. I make them four ounces and um, uh, they last pretty long. Yeah, usually, usually people use those for arthritis and it will give them a few months if they apply every day. Yeah. Yeah. So you can use this for inflammation of the joint, like arthritis, you could use that. Or just bumps and bruises. Anything that is uh, um, inflamed, acute inflammation. It's not going to help if you've had, say, say you've got a slip disc and you've had chronic back pain for 20 years. It's not really designed for that. Um, yeah, it could help with neck pain. Yeah. Or a muscle. Yeah. I tell you, if you want to get to muscle, you can uh, use Arnica and also DMSO, DSMO. Um, it um, it helps to penetrate further into the skin, and um, you can get D DSMO. Yeah. Where can you buy that? Um, you can buy it online. You can buy it online. Yeah. You want one more? Okay. Okay. We're getting to the end. Let me go. So we've got about twenty. Four ounce. I sell for twenty nine ninety five. And um, I, 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 I have a lot of those go. I mean, they, they don't last very long. In fact, I'm run out right now. I've got to make some more. Yeah. They are very common. In fact, the, the paint salve that I make, it's good for um, inflammation. It's good for um, mul multiple things. You could use it for um, repairing damaged skin, you could use it for viruses, bacteria, um, you could even use it for breathing. I mean it's, uh, I used to make several salves, so I used to make a salve for breathing, I used to make a salve for, for colds, inflammation, and I ended up just making one that sort of covers everything. So it's not just for pain, it covers many different areas. So. Yes. No, 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 no. You're not going to have an explosion. No. No. Um, Do you want to warm it again? Because it got harder. I can just. It got it harder. I mean, like. Uh, how many more you got? They're all full. I'm just. They're all full. Because we got enough for everyone here already. Yeah. So, yeah, that's fine. Well. That's good. Yeah. We can just keep that, yeah.
I'll keep that for. I'll, I'll take it for any. He'll, this will be his his little bit. Um, well, I don't mind. If anyone wants to use it now, they can. So you can, if you want to accelerate it to get to get in the uh, to get harder quicker, just put it in the refrigerator, and within five minutes it will be ready to use. So. So that was the simplest way to do a salve. Now you can, as I say, you can infuse the oil before you use the oil. So you can infuse it with cayenne or comfrey. Could you infuse it with all the things that you use essential oils for, but it's not as strong? I find that the essential oils give it more anti-inflammatory effect. Yeah, I mean there's no harm in doing that, but uh, I do find with salves that the essential oils seem to have more power from that perspective of applying them topically than um, just using the herb by itself. Yeah, it is more concentrated. Yeah. Um, with the Vicks paper, um, is it also a salve? Like the Vicks it's more, no, not exactly like a salve, it's, it's more like a cream I think, isn't it? It's more like a gel type thing. S salves typically are made with wax. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, why don't we take a break? Um, everyone can can stock up on their salves. <laughs> okay, let's take a 10 minute break. Do I need to click this or we could? Okay. Alright, now we can give uh, everyone a salve. Would you like a salve? Okay. I'm not taking all these home, so. Um, uh, hey Lydia, would you mind giving how many people do we have? We have 24 here, 24 saps. So um, I think we got plenty to go around. Not everyone is here. Yeah, okay. So do you have any questions about saps? Anyone got any questions about saps? How much money for saps? For one ounce? For one ounce? You're looking about $10? The actual ingredients okay. would only cost you probably, if you included the tin, it may cost you about a dollar fifty for the ingredients, total, total for the, yeah, total. With the tin? With the tin, yeah. Yeah, so, um, when I make salves, I make uh, a lot of them. And you can make a lot of salves. In fact, I've got a friend, he makes a living just uh, uh, selling salves. He's, yeah, he gets lots of orders from making salves. And he does them from, f from half an ounce to four ounces. Yeah. You see, um, when you make things like this, uh, you've got to educate people. Mm -hmm. You see? So, in educating people, you, you, you are sharing the benefits and then they see the benefits and then they get to try it out and then they think, well, I need one of these. Oh, you make it? Oh, I want one. Give me one. <laughs> so, um, you can make a little, there's, there's, a, there's many ways you can make little industries out of these things. You know, I went to... Yeah, yeah. I went to... Um, I went to an island, what was it called now? Um, uh, St. Martin. I went to St. Martin. And I was giving some talks there. Do you, do you mind uh, keeping the noise down? Thanks. Um, I went to St. Martin and uh, I did some programs over there. And I came back home and this lady emailed me and she said, where do you get your tins from? Where, where, where do you get your bottles from? Where, where do you get your labels from? How do you make your labels? And she was asking me all these questions. And then the next thing I know, she was uh, making a living off, off making them herself. She just, 
She just got my DVD. She saw how I did it. Um, she got my recipes. She got my bottles. She got my supplies. She got everything. And then she put her own label on uh, and with her name and, 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 and then she was off making a living. And, and that was a full-time job. <laughs> <laughs> the price is on me. <laughs> um, listen, listen, here's the thing. I go around, I do seminars. I don't sell the herbs. What I do is I sell the benefits. Because here's how it works. Um, like I make extracts, okay? I make four ounce extracts. I didn't bring any of them with me. I just bought one ounce. Uh, I had some two ounce extracts. But we make extracts. And um, I show people how to make them. Okay, I even give them the recipe. And then, you know what happens? Most, 99% uh, of people buy from me. Mm -hmm. yeah, because they don't, the they don't have the time, yeah. you know. Let, let's say, and here's the thing, unless you're doing it commercially, you're not, you're not gonna make any, uh, you're not gonna save any money. No. Usually, unless you're making large amounts and use it for a long period of time, because uh, if you make an extract, you, you have to buy the herb. If you buy, like the elderberry formula that I made, same ingredients I use for an extract. Uh, if you want to make that, you need to buy the berries. So you buy the elderberry, you buy the echinacea, you buy the ginger. The cheap, the, the smallest amount you can buy is four ounces of each one and then they put the price up because it's a smaller amount so you pay maybe seven eight dollars for a little bag four ounces and then you pay ten dollars for shipping and so you've paid thirty plus tax thirty five dollars just for those three herbs then you have to buy a bottle you have to get uh, your, uh, labels you know graphic design all that type of thing and it's not worth you, 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 you're cheaper to buy the, the already made you see? So unless you're going to do it commercially, so what type you're not going to save any money. <coughs> I'm sorry? <coughs> do I have a machine? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, have, uh, I have a cooker that I make my extracts with, okay? So you um, but yeah, you buy the cooker. Mm -hmm. um, but now I also use another company I outsource because it's a balance between I'm either making it or I'm sharing it. I'm I'm educating. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, and I've got a family. So so um, that works in the beginning, but then you get to a point where you just don't want to make it anymore. You want someone else to make it, and <laughs> and that's the wiser way to go. Yeah, like. <laughs> Um, and you see, I give free seminars, so I don't charge people for seminars. Uh, if I'm flying, they pay for my airfare, but then I take my products, and that's how I, that's how I make my living, you see. Can, can I summarize, yeah. just to be sure that I can write what we did, uh, it yeah. was uh, two cups of olive oil. Two cups of olive oil, yes. One uh, half cup of beef. half cup of beef's wax, oil. yes. And then you said uh, a one teaspoon of eucalyptus and frankincense, yes. And another a teaspoon of the other three combined, which is the oregano, oregano ginger, ginger, and clove. clove. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Now, when I make it, I make it slightly different than that because I infuse the olive oil. The olive oil here. I infuse that with uh, the cayenne. Oh. Yeah, and I also use wintergreen. Wintergreen is, is very helpful, especially for muscle pain. It's very good. And I also use peppermint as well, because peppermint has a cooling effect. Same with lavender. And sometimes you have burning, you want to reduce that, uh, you want to cool that, that area down, okay? Um, but if you're going to like a mission trip, let's say you're going to the Philippines, we went to the Philippines and we took all the salves with us. We took salves for mosquitoes. We took salves for burning. 
and we took salves for breathing. We ended up using, I think, almost every single salve we had, we used. Um, because, you know, when you're in a tropical country, you've got to... Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, we nearly lost our son. He nearly died over there. Yeah. In fact, I nearly died over there as well. I, I had a serious head injury. I, I had uh, a really bad case of diarrhea. I got off the, uh, out of the restroom and uh, I started fainting and I ran. I didn't know I was running and I ran straight into the cement wall head first I, and I cracked my head open. And uh, uh, my wife found me in a pool of blood on the floor and a big gash. My head was just open like that. And, uh, and I had to be rushed to uh, hospital. Uh, fortunately, we didn't have any infections. Praise the Lord. Uh, but uh, you don't know what to expect, you know. That's why if you go to a foreign country, take something for pain, take something for inflammation, take something for parasites. You know, there's so many parasites. What happened, with the boy? Um, what happened to the boy? He ended up with a fever. He, we used hydrotherapy. I'd just given away my hydrotherapy equipment and all I had was a t-shirt was a that I used with cold water. And we had a bath. We gave him a bath. He was going up. His temperature was going up in a bathtub of cool water. Uh, he got up to 105 degrees. Um, and then he he cried out to me, Daddy, I can't see. I can't see. And I thought, I, I just, uh, at that point, my life just sort of seemed to just fall apart. You know, and I just cried out, God save us. And um, all I could do was apply the, the uh, t-shirt with hot water, uh, with, with uh, cooler water, and just extract the heat, keep his head cool. And within, um, within an hour, um, it was about an hour later, he started getting under 104. And uh, 104 is a critical time for the immune system because the, the immune system can't keep up with uh, the onslaught of the virus or whatever the bacteria it is. And so um, that was a pivotal point. We, we just kept doing it. I did it all day, just all day, all day, all day, just doing fermentations. And he was uh, 103 for the next 24 hours and finally came down. And we all got it. I got it first and I was bedridden for three days. Then my wife got it, then my daughter got it, and then my son got it the worst. And, um, and uh, we, yeah, anyway, we had a few challenges, but God saw us through. He saw us through. We were over there when that cyclone hit. Remember that cyclone? Uh, Yolanda, it was the, the world's worst cyclone, 195 mile an hour winds, 500 miles across. And I'm at the internet and I'm reading the news and it says about this big super typhoon. And you think, poor people are going to get hit by that. And then you keep reading, it's coming, your, coming my way. <laughs> so I sent an email out to my church I said, please pray for us, we're going to get hit. And uh, they never heard from us after that because communications were knocked down. Um, uh, everything was, uh, it was day-to-day -day survival. And uh, we, uh, I went out one night looking for water, for drinking water, after the storm had gone. Couldn't find any drinking water. We had one glass of water left and my daughter, she needed water for, we had a formula we had, to, um, we had to make for her. And I came back home that night not knowing how God was going to provide. And it was as real as being in the middle of Iraq with bombs dropping. And Satan saying, God's left you, you know. And the Lord saying, your bread and water shall be sure. And uh, I got home that night. And I'm wondering, God, how are you going to provide for us? What do I do? Shall I put a basin out and pray for rain? And uh, then, unexpectedly, this man shows up. 
on a tricycle. We had an impossible road. Mm -hmm. Impossible. You couldn't get a car down there. You couldn't get a four-wheel drive down there. And he shows up on the tricycle with four five-gallon containers of water. He drops them off and disappears. Wow. And we, that was enough water that we had for the next two weeks to make it through. And so we, uh, we praise God. He is good. He is good. He saw us through. But um, in, in, uh, in emergencies, when you have nothing else to rely on, you, you, you know, you, you use what's in your hand. If it's a t-shirt, use that, you know. Um, sometimes you, you're given uh, things to do that you wouldn't normally do, you know. Um, but I think uh, if we didn't have known some of those simple things like hydrotherapy, we may have come back uh, bringing our son in a coffin. I don't know. So um, make sure that you, you have some supplies. It's really important. I mean, there's coming a time, even in this country, where we're going to see uh, terrible sickness like we've never before. You know, um, Psalm 91 says um, uh, that the Lord shall keep us from the noisome pestilence. Mm -hmm. And noisome means unexpected uh, calamity. And pestilence means an airborne infectious disease. And we're going to see many more of these things happen. Look what happened with the bird flu. Killed about 50 million people a hundred years ago. Uh, what if it broke out again? You know, we could use hydrotherapy, we could use herbs, we could use botanicals, um, we could use charcoal. So, you know, study and, and, and know these things. And, and you don't have to study for years, you just find out the best things that you can use for what you th you're going to go through, you know. <coughs> and so, salves are great ways to, to help with things like that. I mean, everyone has pain sometimes, right? So we can use salves at any time. It's just good to have on hand a pain salve. Children especially. I mean, you can even use them on babies. Salves. So make them part of your first aid kit. What do we say could be a part of your first aid kit? Charcoal, cayenne, turmeric, yeah. Salves. <laughs> Make clay, yes, clay. I said charcoal, hydrotherapy kit, maybe a fermentation pad or something like that. Um, okay, now, how are we going for time here? Okay, we got 40 minutes. What do you want to me, me to do with these next uh, 20 minutes we got? We got? Can, we do you want? <laughs> Can we make anything else? What would you like to make? I don't know if we're going to have time to make something else. I was thinking tomorrow and make something else. Well, well, you give me some ideas of what you would like me to make or what things you would... Do you do anything for warts? For warts? <laughs> for warts. <laughs> okay. Um, I remember Agatha Thrash um, coming and teaching us um, <laughs> and she... <laughs> she would have this little trick of getting some string and tying it around and, 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 and tying it and pull it. depends how big it was. If it was like one of those big ones, you know those big ones that you can just, they're just bulging out or, or you can do the same with skin tags. Skin tags? Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you can, yeah, you can starve them. But, Warts in particular, uh, I don't know uh, many effective uh, herbs for warts. Well, it is a um, Yes. Um, now, now, my wife, after saying that, my <coughs> wife has had some success with warts. And um, uh, she found that her warts would come back when she was stressed. Yeah. When she gets stressed, her uh, warts would come back. Now, um, what is good for viruses? Yes. Elderberry. Elderberry. <laughs> elderberry. Now, you don't typically read elderberry for warts, but uh, since it's viral, and I, I'm, I'm just saying what, what I would do, okay? 
but um, anything viral related I would use elderberry um, and build up the immune system because stress can can really uh, allow these viruses to manifest themselves yes I have a question do you have some curves for those who talk too much <laughs> for example ah. when we have presentations two days three days uh, okay. after we are exhausted oh okay I thought you were asking me to be quiet for a minute <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about women. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Is okay. there something that can help, can help with the, the voice? Yes, there is. I'll tell you one of the best things for that is um, not actually a herb, but um, hydro. Hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy. Just having a you know, wet cloth, um, cotton cloth around your neck. Um, and just uh, dip it in cold water and then put a sock around it or something some wool and some plastic you know what do you call it cellophane and just yeah saran wrap um, that can help with that that's that's one of the best things for, for uh, if you're speaking too much you get so you get a strain you're straining the vocal cords and and that can help bring new blood into the air and help relieve any strain that's going on. I was going to say that my, one of my sons one time had a really bad so planter's wart. Planter's wart? Okay. How he came up with it, but he had it. Uh -huh. And his, uh, one of his teachers was giving the children these, I call them horse tablets. They got vitamin C's that were chewable. Mm -hmm. And they, he was giving them a lot of them every day, every day. And I noticed that he, during that time, mm -hmm. about a week later, that planter's wort had totally gone away. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have vitamin C. And vitamin I have C, yeah. That it helps. Mm -hmm. but I was wondering, are you familiar with Kamakami powder? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be like the highest it's, vitamin C. Yeah, Kamakami is very high. Um, goji berry is another one. Um, rose, hips. rose hips. um mm -hmm. is about four times less than goji berry. Um, so goji. Goji berry is, uh, you can eat them. Yeah, you can, they're like a seed, a red seed. I, I don't have any here, but I can maybe bring some tomorrow. But they're very high, very high. They're like a vitamin C tablet. Now, I'll just say this about supplements, okay? Because a lot of people are taking vitamin C. Can you hear me back there? A lot of people are taking vitamin C and it, they don't realize that not all vitamin C is equal, okay? Yeah. So uh, most vitamin C is from genetically modified organisms. <coughs> it's from corn, okay? So from what I've seen, probably around 70% of that is uh, genetically modified. Uh, I'm talking about different products. If you put like 10 products in a row, maybe seven out of, eight out of 10 would be uh, genetically modified. So Kamakamo is a good one for that. Uh, rose hips is another <coughs> one that's sometimes used, uh, but just make sure you know what the source is because often it doesn't say. In fact, it's not required on the label and laws to put on there where it comes from. So, vitamin B's are often a uh, problem with that too because they often come from petroleum products. Um, vitamin D uh, tends to be from sheep's wool. Um, vitamin E. You know, it depends where it's from. Could be from wheat germ, which is fine, um, but it could be synthetic. It could be. I don't know where the other source they. I'm trying to think. Any kind of oil. Yeah, just inferior oils. Even though they're not, um, you know, they're, they're vegetable based. They may not be the highest grade. So just check on your labels, on, and if it's not on the label, um, ask questions because um, vitamins are often um, inferior to what is found in a natural source. So I'd rather get my vitamins from the plants than get it from some synthetic tablet or some genetically modified or something that's isolated. You don't find isolated vitamin C in nature. Yes? What do you use for gallstones? Gallstones. 
Okay, gallstones, it depends on the gallstone size. Sometimes I recommend even surgery for gallstones if it's too big. One um, inch. Why? One because inch. it's hard, huh? An inch. Yeah, they can get pretty big, yeah. Uh, that's. Same. Yeah, for an inch? Wow, that's big. An inch. Have you, have you got an. Oh, anyway, I shouldn't ask. Um, I'm sort of, you know, I, I know people use that and I've, I've sort of, I've got um, mixed feelings about it because some people swear that they get rid of their gallstones and I spoke to, I remember speaking to Agatha about this and she analyzed it and she said, because she was really excited. Um, and she found they weren't actually gallstones through her microscope. And, but saying that, um, it's possible. It's possible if you took high amounts of oil, that because it's causing so much bioproduction, it could perhaps. This is the only way I can sort of reconcile. It could perhaps dislodge a stone. So. But, um, so I'm willing to admit that there is a possibility that this could work, but at the same time I haven't seen uh, really the evidence that they are actually stones where it's like dissolving them. Right. I, I don't know if that's really happening and the with other gallstones. Thing, if, it, if it is a very large gallstone and you're uh -huh. yourself with a lot of oil and fat, Yes. That's right. Yeah, I. I mean, yeah, because these stones are made of of, of uh, fats, cholesterol. Um, it's yes, that's right. That's right. And um, yeah, you you also don't want to end up with uh, kidney stones either. They're pretty um, serious stuff. In fact. So avoiding them by avoiding a high fat diet. Well, I'm talking about high amounts of free oils. Right, no. Yeah, high amounts of free. I'm not against, uh, I'm not saying we should avoid oils, okay. Uh, I'm just against the use of high amounts of, of free oils. So don't take, uh, you know, a cup of olive oil, right? Yeah, I know. You know, it's not, not a wise thing to do. Okay, have you got any more questions, Last few minutes? Yeah, could you revisit the uh, lemon juice situation you were talking about? I mean, were you using that for the amount of lemon? Oh, when I was using it, when I was using it, it was causing, yeah, no, I was using like 12 lemons. Per day? But like, for, yeah, I was using, uh, per, like, uh, I was using one to two cups of lemon juice. Per day? Per, per day. For what? Well, I just thought um, it was just nice, refreshing drink, and I thought you can't overdose on lemons, and then it changed my pH of my urethra and ended up with a UTI infection. Did it make you real alkaline? Did it make me what? Alkaline. Positive. Oh yes, it changed the. That's the problem. It, it made alkaline. it too. It made me too alkaline. And if you get too alkaline, yes, yeah, you can that's get right. Water. That's right. The bacteria can. Doesn't make you too acidic. No. No, 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 no. no. Normal acidic uh, environment and the weather. Yeah, not yeah, but it changes the pH in the urethra, which causes the bacteria could migrate back oh, yeah. and up, up through the urethra. So that's that's the problem. And um, so you can overdo anything. <laughs> that's why temperance, the law of temperance, it goes through every law. Even good things. Too much of good things. That's right. Okay, did everyone get a salve? Yeah. You got that? Yeah. I haven't got one. You haven't got one? This guy wants to sell them, so we'll let you have, uh, have an extra one. Um, but has anyone been uh, putting it on their joints yeah. of pain? Yes. Is it, is it, are you starting to feel a little, a little better? Okay, good. I think that there's some people that aren't at class that might the, be here tomorrow. Oh, okay. All right, let's save a few for, for the, the, the ones that are away. And, um, and if you have, oh, by the way, in the book here, in the book here, you've got some salve recipes. So 
If you want to make some burn salve, uh, chest rub salve, anti-aging salve, calendula salve, uh, this some. Well, listen, we're not at the tree of life yet, but um, <laughs> any little bit of help, extra help, can go a long way. So all, all the anti-aging salve is is salve that is high in antioxidants because our skin gets attacked with antioxidants. That's what ages our skin, is oxidation. Anti antioxidants help protect that. We get free radical attacks. Did I say antioxidants cause our skin damage? Yes. If I did forget it, erase that, I meant free radicals cause the damage and antioxidants help protect that. So. Um, so salves can help. You can use a salve. If you, we, we used to make a beauty salve and um, yeah, just put it on the skin. We use frankincense, we use rose oil just to, just to help with the skin because some of, these, some of these essential oils have what we call phytoceramides and phytoceramides can help cause water retention in the skin and so it plumps out the skin and it can hydrate the skin. So, so that's what it's good for. So in that sense, it can help uh, tone up the skin, beautify it. Yes? How much did you say it takes of rose petals to yeah. make an ounce? Uh, well, it takes 2,000 petals to make one drop of rose oil. Oh, wow. 2,000 petals. Is there enough All right. roses in the world to do this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it. That's why it's so expensive. Yeah, if you get true rose oil. There, there's a lot of rose oils out there, but they're not really rose oil. It's diluted. It's very small amounts. Yeah, counterfeit. All right. Well, let's uh, finish up up there, and uh, we just a few minutes earlier, but I think that's okay. Yeah, we have and, to look uh, to tomorrow. Yeah, we've got the last day tomorrow, so hopefully it'll be the best one. And uh, why don't we finish with a word of prayer? Let's let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you so much for. Um, the, 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 the many uh, salves that we've learned today, the, the healing balm, and, and Father, this all points to what you want to do for our souls spiritually, and how you want to give us healing, you want to give us forgiveness, you want to give us that, that grace that can just repair uh, that, that, that sin-sick soul. And Father, we, we need the anointing of your eye salve. We need to uh, appreciate what you're doing for us and how you've blessed us and how you're, you're uh, turning over every stone to get our attention focused upon you. And Father, we just give you the glory and praise for these things. We pray that you'll help us to use this to help our neighbors, to help our friends. And if there's some here that want to take it further and, and start up a ministry, well, we, we, we pray that you'll give us the motivation, the energy, the enthusiasm to follow through and, and use this that can win souls for your kingdom. And we thank you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.